So here we have a house that's a little bit tired and sorry for itself. So we need to understand how we can transform this house into a beautiful home with some effort, uh, some tender loving care, and also some help from Santex masonry paints. But before we start painting, we need to understand that there are some issues with this house. So I'm going to actually describe those to you and also the solutions, how we're going to deal with them. So let me show you exactly what they are. You can see here that the house has flaking and peeling paint on the soffits and fascias. There is mould and fungus growth on the surface, and this looks unsightly. There are slight hairline cracks. The house has prime examples of what we call an unstable surface, and the gloss on the windows is peeling away. These all need to be treated, and I'll show you how. So we're ready to choose our paint now. And Santex comes in two main finishes. We have an ultra smooth, which is great for over large surface areas and is easy to apply. We also have a fine textured paint, which is ideal for high exposed areas where you want a little bit more added durability. Now both of these paints would be ideal for this house. And both would last up to 15 years, provided you applied them in the correct way. One of the unique properties of Santex is the MicroSeal technology. This enables the paint to stay cleaner for much longer than a normal masonry paint and also a little bit more breathable, so therefore the paint will last a little bit longer. Now we'd normally recommend two coats of masonry to give you a nice even film thickness. However, you can actually get a one coat masonry paint from Santex as well. So now we know what type of paint we're going to choose, we actually need to find out how much paint we're going to need. This is quite simple really, all you need to do is measure the height, times that against the width, and that will give you a square meterage. Obviously you've got to take into account any windows or doors or any other areas that you're not going to paint. And if you look on the back of the pack, it actually does give you the coverage and the square meters per litre. So there we go. So we know what type of paint we require. We know how much paint we require, but we haven't really chose the colours yet. And obviously that's one of the most important things when you're choosing paint. Well, Santex offers you some help there because obviously we've got the uh, ubiquitous colour card. We're probably one of the largest colour ranges available in the market. One thing that might be of help to you is actually buying one of the Santex tester pots. And these are fantastic for helping you choose your colour. There's one little tip though, rather than painting actually onto the wall and then ending up with a blob on the wall that you might not like, it's much easier if you use something like a piece of card or a piece of plasterboard. Obviously colours will look different at different times of the day, depending on the light, also at the front of the house or the side of the house. So this will allow you to actually choose your colour and get the right ones at the first time. So you've worked out how much paint you need. Obviously the next stage now is going by the paint. Just one tip, make sure you get enough paint to finish the job. because It's always easier to take paint back to the shop that you haven't used than actually run out halfway through the job. And there you go. So here we've got some hairline cracks. Obviously what we need to do is fill these cracks. First thing you saw me do is just remove any loose flaking material with a knife. And then we use the fine surface filler, which will enable us to get a nice proud situation, which once that's dry, after about two or three hours, we can rub that back and then we're ready to paint. Cracks on the surface are repaired by filling them. The Ready Mix Filler by Santex is a great solution for this. Use a flexible filling knife to apply the filler and indeed for deeper cracks, you might want to build up the filler in stages. Well the filler's dry now, ready to rub down so as we can then paint it. It's quite simple really. So there we are, ready to paint now.
So here we have a problem with an unstable surface. So just have a look at this. So as you can see here, we've got a very, very dusty sort of surface. So this dusty wall is a real problem because the paint will stick to the dust and not onto the masonry. So we need to deal with that. Now, some people think, well, if I wash it down with water, that will deal with the dust. Well, unfortunately, what it'll do is it'll stick the dust together, but as soon as it dries, it becomes unstable again. So we need to use a proper solution. In this case, we're using Santex stabilizing solution. This is, if you will, like a liquid glue. It will stick onto the wall. Once it's dry, after about four hours, you're ready to recoat with paint. Most times you won't need to use a stabilising solution. However, if you have an unstable surface, it is essential that you treat it. One additional benefit of using Santex stabilising solution will be that the surface will be less absorbent and therefore you will actually use less paint. So I've prepared my walls now, I'm going to paint them with the Santex Ultra Smooth Masonry Paint. First thing I'm going to do is actually cut in around all the corners and the edges. And one tip is actually use a regular small brush because that will give you much more control when you're cutting in. And then when you're ready you can move on to the large surface area. Well I've cut in now using the brush so I'm going to use the roller now just to get the large surface area done. One interesting thing when you're thinking about rollers is obviously just using the right pile. In this case I'm using a medium pile which would be ideal for this fine texture on this surface. Uh, when you're using a roller one of the problems you sometimes encounter is getting all that spatter on your face. Just basically what I would suggest you do is actually put the pressure on, on the upward stroke when the roller is rolling into the surface. Just take that off when you're coming back and then you'll reduce that spray on your face. You can use a brush or a roller to apply your masonry paint. However, rollers are most popular for covering large areas. You can even attach an extension pole to cover those hard to reach areas. Now when working at height, a scaffolding platform allows you to work safely. And these can be hired from your local hire stations. So these windows are in a real problem state, obviously the paint's flaking away. We need to sand that back so as we get a good sound surface for the paint to stick to. We're going to use a sanding block here with some sandpaper. Um, just one tip is actually when you're working edge to edge with the glass, is make sure that you don't actually rub the sanding paper on and scratch all the glass. So I'm going to actually just keep my finger a little bit proud as I come up to the edge and therefore we won't have a problem with that. When preparing your windows, you may also opt to use a mechanical sander. So I rub this window frame back, so obviously to burr timber, so I need to use a primer. And in this case, I'm using the Santex High Performance Primer Undercoat. It's important that you use a primer when you get back to burr timber because it will enable the paint to get a grip and key onto the surface. And in this case, I'm using white because I'm going to be painting it with white gloss. But we also do a grey primer undercoat. And that's ideal for when you want to paint with a black gloss or a darker colour. And that's your primer undercoats. So I'm going to show you how to paint a wooden window frame. As you can see, we've already used a white primer here. That's because I'm going to use the Santex exterior white gloss. Once it's primed and it's dry, then I'm going to actually just slightly dean a bit down just to take any of the bits away. And a good tip is actually use a dry brush just to take any of the dust particles that are there. And then when I'm actually ready to paint, as you can see, I've just braced the window open. That will allow me to just paint in the recesses before I can then start actually on the frame itself, starting from the top, working the way down. So let's start painting.
To prevent the paint from running, be careful not to overload your brush. It's a good idea to use masking tape around the edge of the windows so that no paint ends up on the glass. This means that you can actually get a nice sharp edge. So there we have it. We've painted our Santex exterior gloss onto the window. Looks good, doesn't it? As you can see, we've removed the door handles and furniture prior to painting. So here we have a panel door. I'm going to show you how to paint this door. But first thing, as you can see, we've already primed it. But before we actually put the gloss paint on, we need to actually just take off any of the little bits that are on there. I'm just using a very fine glass paper to just to what we call denib it. And that will also allow the gloss paint to get a really good key onto the surface. And um, there is an order in which you'd paint the door. So let me show you how we do that. Okay, so that was a little too fast. So how did I actually paint this door? Having painted the top and the side edges, I then painted the mouldings and the recesses, and then the flat panels. Next, I painted the centre verticals, and then the centre horizontals. Last but not least, I painted the end verticals. So there we have it, that's how to paint a panel door. <laughs>